Are you on social media? What about dating apps? Then this video is for you. So you probably put up pictures of your holiday on social media. You liked and shared a dog video. Perhaps you commented on a makeup tutorial. Later in the day, you went on a dating app and swiped right on a bunch of people and matched with them. And then you exchanged messages with these people. What really happens to all of this personal data that you put out there? Whose hands does it end up in? How does this affect you? And where does India's draft data protection bill fit in? Let me explain. But before I go into that, a quick reminder to support our journalism here at the News Minute. We cannot do stories like this which are really resource intensive without your support. So do become a member of the News Minute community by clicking on the link in the description below. Also to catch every episode of Let Me Explain which comes out every week, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay, let me first break down some of this jargon for you. What exactly do I mean when I say personal data? This can be basic information that any app or social media platform collects when you sign up. Your name, your gender, your date of birth, your location, your ethnicity, sexual orientation, religious beliefs, your mobile number and email address. Then there's the data that social media or a dating app or any e-platform collects the more you engage or use it. Your phone or laptop model, your IP address, the dates and times that you access various sites or services, your behavior, your lifestyle choices, what your interests are, and of course, all of the communication and engagement that happens on these platforms. So how much of data on us do these platforms have? The short answer is a lot. And if you link your Instagram or Facebook handle to a dating app or even an online gaming app, you're essentially giving these apps and platforms more access to information about you. In fact, one Guardian journalist found out that dating app Tinder had 800 pages of information about her. And the truth is that every app on your phone and mine probably has the same amount of information about us. So what's the big deal, you ask? Well, for starters, most of these platforms are storing this data, even if you end up deleting these apps from your phone. But what's more concerning is that these platforms, services and companies are using this data and other data that they've collected about you, other people and things to identify patterns and similarities or differences. And thus they slot you into various categories, what your political preferences are or how you may vote, for example. What's more, these social media platforms or dating apps share this personal data of yours with third parties. This may be with or without your explicit permission. This is a serious violation of your right to privacy. So what do they do with this data? Well, it's mostly used for targeted advertising. You know that saying that if you're not paying for it, then you are the product? Can't be truer for social media platforms and dating apps. Now, the personal data can also be shared with researchers, but data can also be leaked or breached. And we've seen multiple cases of this in India, like Air India, where the personal data of 4.5 million users was breached or Big Basket, where the personal information of 20 million customers was allegedly sold on the dark web. Bharat Matrimony 2 also suffered a breach where the personal data of customers was put up for sale on the dark web in 2020. How does this affect you? Well, the data that these platforms have on you can impact things like what digital ads you see or even the kind of profile that shows up on your dating app. But there's more. Data about your medical history, which is sold to advertisers, can also potentially determine how much you pay for health insurance, for example. Your personal data can also end up in the wrong hands to commit identity fraud. Basically, when someone uses your name or other personal information to buy a bunch of things or withdraw money from your bank account. But unlike the European Union, for example, platforms in India which have seen data breaches have suffered little to no consequences. And this is because India has no data protection law. Now, the Union government has been mulling a data protection law since the landmark Putuswami judgment in 2017, when the Supreme Court said that the right to privacy is a fundamental right. But before I go into the draft bill, it's important to understand what privacy is. Privacy is the right to be left alone, to be free from surveillance. It's the right to be anonymous. You can be whoever you are, think freely without judgment or fear of discrimination. You may ask why privacy matters or that you have nothing to hide. But imagine a government or a company knowing every conversation you have, every purchase you make, every place you visit. Imagine someone or some institution knowing everything about your past, your present and can possibly predict your future actions. This knowledge that they have about you is not only powerful but can also potentially harm you. 
In his article, Why Privacy Matters Even If You Have Nothing To Hide, Professor Daniel J. Solov gives many examples of this potential harm. He says, imagine the government leaks your information to the public or decides that based on the data it has on you, you may engage in criminal activity. Or based on your financial transactions, it decides to freeze your bank account, even if you've done nothing wrong. These are just some of the examples of why your privacy matters. Okay, let's go back to the draft data protection bill, which was tabled in Parliament in December last year, along with a joint parliamentary committee report. Digital rights experts have extensively detailed the issues with the bill. Now, the bill has gotten many things right and many things it's gotten wrong. I'll highlight three main problems with the bill. First is that many rights of the individual or the data principle, that's basically you and me, are in fact limited in the current form of the bill. What right do you have as an individual? You can't go and tell the organization whose data uh, servers were uh, breached uh, and um, say what, what are you going to do about it. Because the, uh, according to what the current bill is, the, the data fiduciary, in this case, in this case a, a Domino's Pizza or a Air India or a Big Basket, will have to report this bre breach only to the Data Protection Authority and the Data Protection Authority and the fiduciary can decide if this is serious enough to tell the individual, that is the data principle, that is you and I. So we, we may know, we don't have any recourse in law for this. How do we say, hey, big basket, I'm going to hold you accountable for, for the very lax way in which you treated my data? No way you can do that. Eventually, yes, there will be the data protection authority on its own volition may say, hey, this is a bad thing, we'll have to do something. Then they may uh, they may say, uh, apply a fine. Now this right to consent that you give to um, uh, your data fiduciaries, uh, you have the right to withdraw the consent at any point of time, um, which means you can tell uh, uh, tell um, uh, any of these companies stop collecting data about me. And then how do you? enforce that i think is sort of vaguely mentioned in the bill and that needs to be sort of clarified that has to be enforced and the idea of right to be forgotten that is you can say as an individual i do not want to be part of this please delete all data about me don't remember me so for instance if uh, somebody in your family dies um, you can tell uh, for instance when my dad died i can tell the bank uh, please remove my dad's name from the accounts. Uh, you know, the, we are going to close all these accounts. So all of these things should be possible, a sort of possible, but there is no way right now, I think, to enforce these because it's the DPA which has to um, sort of oversee these things. Second, and worryingly, the bill provides exemptions to the union government and its agencies on the grounds of national security, public order, etc, etc. What? Or what right do I as an individual have when the government leaks my data? We, uh, in, like I said, other data is being released. Now the government is saying we will uh, tag your uh, uh, voter ID with, uh, with, uh, with the with with the other. You're already your PAN details are already connected to other and things like that. What happens when these things are leaked and they are leaked regularly? I have no way to go against the government. I, as an individual citizen, cannot go against the government here. And by the very framing of the law, the DPA has no uh, has no power over the uh, central government in exercising these things. Therefore, we are in a case where the government can get away with uh, with just basically uh, walking roughshod over all of us, all of our data. As far as social media platforms go, the bill designates them as publishers instead of intermediaries. What this means is that social media platforms would be held accountable for all content posted by users. Some critics suggest that the consequence of this will be curtailing free speech, forcing social media platforms to take to censorship. This is very confusing because um, under the Information Technology Act of 2000 and the uh, subsequent rules, uh, social uh, subsequent rules released in 2011, um, in uh, 2021 and things like that, social media platforms are seen as intermediaries and they are intermediaries because they do not create content on their own, right? They uh, they, disp they collect information, they collect content uh, from the users and they display it. And that's an intermediary role, that is not a publisher role. So I don't know how this is going to work in this case. Already we see that with the operation of the IT rules, that the scope for um, uh, free speech on, on these platforms and on these messaging tools 
are sort of restricted because the government has access to it and we don't know what the government will take Ambraj to. We can't say uh, at what time the government will say a simple message is, ter- is termed uh, anti, anti-national anti and against the interest of the state. And then we now see, uh, if we say that if the uh, PDP bills says the social media, uh, social media platforms are publishers, then what is going to happen? Um, how will they act with these two regimes operating uh, against each other? Um, uh, what is the space for dissent? What is the space for critique? So as it stands, the bill really falls short in protecting your data and your privacy. Many have demanded that the bill be amended before it can become a law. But the law is just one aspect of protecting our privacy. After all, we as individuals or as a society are happy to give away our personal information without weighing the pros and cons and don't demand that our right to privacy be upheld or don't demand action when our privacy is violated. There is very little that the law alone can achieve. What are your thoughts on data protection? What should the government do as far as this bill is concerned? Tell us in the comments. Also, if you've liked this video, don't forget to hit like and share this video with your friends.